Good morning and welcome to today's Return to Campus Town Hall webinar. My name is Dr. Brian Hamluck and I serve as the Associate Dean of Students and Director of Administration here at the University of Pittsburgh. Today, I am pleased to facilitate a session with key leaders on campus and in the medical field covering the important service areas and information of housing and move-in, dining services, academic affairs, new student programs and welcome week, campus recreation, student health services, and COVID-19 topics, including testing. We will start with each panelist giving a brief overview of the key current topics from their areas, and then we will have time to take some questions at the end. If you have questions, please utilize the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. For the purpose of this session, please try to keep your questions broad in nature so that all participants can benefit. If you have an individual specific or nuanced question that is relative to your own situation, we will be providing contact information for all of our key areas at the end of the session. With that housekeeping information taken care of, let's get started with our first panelist to provide some information about housing and move-in. Here is Kathleen Kyle, our Director of Housing and Panther Central. Good morning, everybody. I hope that you're doing well on this Monday morning. Uh, first uh, thing that I'd like to share is that we've successfully had four of our six first year move-in sessions, arrival sessions, and they've gone very smoothly. Um, if you're listening in um, because you've already moved in and you wanted to get some other information, thank you for your participation. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for following all of our guidelines. Again, it's been a very smooth process. If you're preparing to move in um, either this week or in the coming weeks, um, thank you for tuning in and hopefully we can answer some of your questions. A um, couple of things I just wanted to, to re-emphasize or talk through is just to encourage everybody who's still ready to move in to follow all of the instructions that we've given you, the instructions on your parking pass, where to park, when to arrive, um, that you can have one helper come with you. Um, all of those things are really important, right? Uh, hopefully our signage on campus, um, we've continued to tweak it a little bit as we've gone through our arrival days, telling you where to park, where to get carts, all of those types of things. When you do arrive, um, just know that, you know, if you um, need some extra assistance, there will be folks wearing polo shirts, either blue like the one Brian's wearing or gray, um, and folks uh, are more than happy to answer questions for you and point you in the right direction when you get here. A couple of health and safety things are regarding moving that I wanted to touch on is that we have doubled all of our high touch um, cleaning areas. And so whether that's the bathrooms, our common bathrooms, our bathrooms within our residence hall facilities, as well as all of our elevators, um, doors, ramps, those types of things, we are cleaning those twice a day um, in all of those areas. And so you will see that for those of you living in residence halls with common bathrooms, you will see that there's about 45 minutes a day where there will be signs in your bathroom that say closed for cleaning. Um, we encourage you to use another bathroom if you need to in the residence hall, um, but just know that that will be consistent every day and that will be the time that, that your restrooms are closed twice a day. If you are in a residence hall where the bathroom is within your suite or within your apartment, you're gonna be given a pit shines bucket. Um, it comes with a bucket and a mop and a sponge and some disinfectant. Um, and uh, we're trying to help you uh, have all the things that you need to keep your bathroom clean as much as possible. You'll be um, given other safety uh, tips. For example, we're asking the students don't leave anything in the bathroom. Um, you don't leave your toothbrush on the sink, those types of things. You take it back with you into your, into your bedroom um, and then bring it with you whenever you need to. So, Look for the signage, look for all that information. It's really intended to keep you as safe as possible um, as we uh, get, the, get the year started. Um, a couple of other things that I will talk about. Uh, if folks, if you do need some maintenance done in any of your, in your room, you, you notice that maybe your screen is broken in the window or, or something's not right, uh, some heating, cooling issues, you are gonna follow the same process we've always done. So we have an online, um, system with which you would put in work requests, go ahead and put that in. Know that when a couple of things are gonna be different, when the maintenance person or the engineer comes to your room, the couple of things, one, they will be wearing a mask and they will ask that you also wear a mask at that time. They will ask that you open the window if the weather is appropriate to do that. Um, and they would ask if you're comfortable and you would like to depart while they're there or if you want to stay, whatever you're most comfortable with. They will disinfect the area that they're gonna be looking at within the room, make any repair needed, disinfect again before they leave. 
Um, and uh, that's going to be our process moving forward. And so if you need anything, I know um, a couple of folks have wanted their beds raised or lowered and things like that. Know that the maintenance staff is, is there and ready to help, um, but they will be taking some extra safety precautions. We, again, just want to emphasize that you follow all of our recommendations as much as possible with in terms of physical distancing, spacing in elevators, there are lots of signage, a lot of stickers on floors, advising you, giving you guidelines about where to stand, um, how to operate um, certain stairwells are one direction, um, certain stairwells are two directions, and they ask you to stay to the right. So please be aware of all of those signage um, messages out there that are just really trying to keep you safe. Um, keep us informed if there's things that we can do for you um, uh, to better improve your experience, please let us know. And with that, I'm gonna pause and there's a lot of panelists here that have information. Um, and then at the end, we will answer any questions that you might have. Thanks so much. Great, thanks so much, Kathleen. Here to give us um, some information on our dining services is Joe Beeman, our Director of Dining Services. Joe, over to you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, love talking about food. So uh, first and foremost, welcome to Pitt. Uh, excited to have you. Uh, my name is Joe Beeman and I'm the Director of Dining Services for the University. Uh, as many of you are aware, um, you know, the, the dining process, um, you know, nationwide has changed a little bit during the COVID period. So just wanted to kind of give you an update on what we are doing at Pitt to make sure that we are providing a good, delicious, and uh, most importantly, safe experience for your students. So uh, you are going to, um, you're going to see that for the first up and through September 4th, that all of the meals at it are going to be to go. Um, so one of the things that you'll hear uh, quite often is risk posture. Which risk posture are we in and how are we um, operating within this risk posture. So, you know, what we have decided to do with pit dining is all the way through the, the quarantine period from when our last student arrives, all of the meals are going to be to go and we are going to provide them in a physically uh, distanced uh, manner. So we have decided to open two new dining halls um, for the first semester on campus. One of them is at the residence in Bigelow, uh, which is you know, primarily to be used for the students residing up there. Um, we wanted to make sure that at that residence, we had the um, you know, bandwidth to be able to serve you know, all three meals and allow students to do their physical distancing while they're at their residence. We also are uh, this afternoon opening a brand new outdoor covered venue called the Hub at Paws Bar. So what we've done here is we have created two separate dining areas under our largest outdoor covered patio area on campus. And what this is allowing for students to do is to use their meal plans while again having uh, the safe physical distancing, um, you know, Able to be able to be done. So you're going to see there's three of our retail concepts that we've mirrored and that we've built on the on the uh, on the patio at Paws Bar, uh, as well as the all you care to eat dining experience. So when we talk about the all you care to eat dining experience, I wanted to just you know spend a minute or two on that. Um, many of your students will have unlimited style meal plans, and they are exactly that. They are unlimited plans. So you have the your, your student is going to be able to go into our dining halls, and this is made to order food that's going to be placed into go boxes that they can bring out with them. Now, if they're really hungry and want to have as much as they can eat, they're more than welcome to do that. But they are more than welcome also um, to come back as many times as they see necessary throughout the day. So we did want to make sure that, the, you know, that if you, if you have a student who's more of a snacker uh, than a large scale eater, um, we certainly put those into the plans as well. Um, you know, one of the other new elements of our meal plans this year uh, is a meal exchange program where every meal plan has once a day, uh, you, your student can use um, one of their meal swipes at any of our dining locations, our retail operations throughout campus. So if you have a student who loves Chick-fil-A or Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, um, we've got a brand new True Burger concept and a couple of real fresh salads and sub shops, your student is able to once a day go and get one of those meals as part of their dining package. I know that we're going to have somebody who's going to want to eat Taco Bell at least three times a week, and we certainly worked that into the program. So um, you're going to see 
uh, extra safety precautions being taken. All of our dining halls have uh, strict distancing stickers, signs, um, communication throughout, um, helping to cue your students uh, into the right area. So when you come on the campus, you're going to see at Towers a lot of one-way, um, you know, corridors that weren't there before. These were created in collaboration with our design team out of our real estate office to really help us to make sure that this, this physical distancing is at its maximum protective capabilities. Uh, another thing you're going to see is plexiglass barriers everywhere, right? We want to not only protect your student, but we want to protect our staff. And so you're going to see our staff taking extra safety measures. There's communication throughout. All of our staff has taken COVID specific training before they had started. You're going to see a lot of, uh, a lot of distance and a lot of only uh, served meals. There's going to be no serve yourself salad bars. That being said, there's going to be plenty of, of, of salads that they can be made for your student, plenty of fresh, good foods that are going to be available. So we're really excited. You know, as Kathleen had said, it's been a successful uh, last week. We uh, look to continue on that momentum. And if you have any questions, we're going to be here and I will pass it back to Brian until further notice. Thanks so much, Joe. Appreciate all of that information. Um, we're creeping closer, obviously, to the start of our classes, and so I want to turn it over to April Bellback, our Director of Undergraduate Advising and Mentoring, to give us an update on academic affairs. April? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Brian. It's been so great to begin to welcome students back to campus. I love seeing everyone here. And so what I want to do today is address um, the most common questions that our acad team, academic team has been getting. So first, like you said, Brian, we're hearing so many good questions about class, how classes will be offered in the fall. So I wanted to explain a little bit about that. Thanks um, KK for explaining the move in process and it's going so smoothly. But I do wanna say that if you're scheduled to move in on or after August 19th on the first day of class, don't worry. You can attend your first days of classes remotely. And then once you're settled in and have completed your shelter in place, you can attend classes as available in person, and I'll explain a little bit about that in a moment as well. So we're also working on providing some safe study places on campus and also shifting academic support resources to help you when classes start. So we'll have those resources and details available to you and to let your mentors and advisors and faculty know where they are and post it online shortly as well. So I wanna reiterate that the Pittsburgh and Greensburg campuses are, are in elevated risk. So the vast majority of your classes will begin remotely. And our other campuses, Bradford, Johnstown and Titusville are in the guarded risk posture. So let's talk a little bit more about that and about the Flex at Pitt instructional model, which allows for lots of choices. And that's why sometimes it seems a little bit confusing. So a lot of folks, our instructors and experts from our teaching center, are hard at work still preparing for fall classes, which begin in just a few days. And the Flex at Pitt model will allow our students to receive the best possible education at Pitt like we always do. So students at the Pittsburgh campus can now check in PeopleSoft for completed classroom assignments. So you go into your student center and you'll see that updated information when looking at your fall schedule. So new course meeting times based on the new passing periods and class classroom locations have been updated. So I suggest you go in there if you haven't been in there recently. And so courses that will meet only remotely are denoted as a web-based class. So as well, annotations have been added to PeopleSoft under the class notes to identify the classroom's operational modality while the university is in the guarded risk operational posture. So in other words, it might say something like a full cohort, a rotated cohort, or all remote. And so we also have an infographic that I'm just gonna share real quick that kind of explains this a little bit better. Can everyone see that? And, and so one more time, this is in the guarded risk posture. So I wanna point that out and I'll explain that again too. So about 60% um, of our classes are in the guarded risk posture or, or what's in that, that top level. So in the full cohort classroom. So you'll meet every day um, in the full cohort in the classroom. About 30% of our classes are what's in what's called a rotated cohort. 
So in other words, if you have a Tuesday, Thursday class, you might meet in Tuesday in person and Thursday online, right? And so that's a, a rotated cohort classroom. And then the rest of our classes are all remote. So very large classes might be fully remote, but you might have a recitation that could meet online as well. Again, almost all classes and all recitations will be fully remote in the elevated and high risk operational postures. And the Pittsburgh and Greensburg campuses are in that elevated risk posture at this moment. I'm gonna stop sharing and I'll talk a little bit more about that. With Flexit Pit, you're still going to have some um, interpersonal discussions that are essential to the learning experience for all of your classes that might look a little bit different depending class to class. So your faculty will let you know a little bit more about that. So that's not gonna go away. And students can choose on a daily basis. So you can change your mind at any time how you want to attend classes, depending on what might be happening to you or your family. So that's important to note as well. And we also want you to know that there are some majors like nurse, nursing majors and some other things that depend on those clinical and lab experiences. And we know that those need to be in person. And we want you to check with your undergraduate coordinator and your departments on how those things will be offered. So please reach out to them. That's very dependent on your departments so they will know how, how that works. So please reach out to your departments on that. But nearly all courses will be offered virtually no matter what the risk level. So that's important that if you need to be virtual that, that you will be able to do that in most cases. And it's also important to note that we'll be utilizing this FlexiPit model in the spring as well. Yes, classes begin this Wednesday in just a couple days, August 19th. And for the first three days, all classes will be held remotely at all campuses. Pittsburgh and Greensburg, we are in the elevated risk and most classes will be held remotely while these two campuses remain in this posture. And then on Monday, August 24th, many classes will continue in person at Bradford, Johnstown and Titusville. And you wanna check in PeopleSoft for how those classes will meet. If you have more questions about the calendar, the academic calendar, please visit www.registrar.pit.edu slash calendars. And just the last thing I wanna say is, you know, each class might look just a little bit different on how you're gonna connect virtually. So you wanna go into your MyPit portal and check on in Canvas or just reach out to your instructor via email and, and they're gonna let you know. So that's all I have for now, but if you have more questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thanks, Brian. Great, thanks so much, April. Now here to give us some information about Welcome Week and orientation is Julia Chen, our program coordinator for new student programs. Julia. Hello everyone, my name is Julia Chen. I work as program coordinator in the Office of New Student Programs. Welcome to Pitt. We have been hosting Welcome Week events since last Wednesday. So this is really six day in. Uh, we're really glad to see lots of you popping in in our events, virtual events. Um, we're hoping, to, we're, we're planning to have more events throughout the week and then until uh, next Sunday, 23rd. So if you haven't got a chance to join us in the past uh, couple of days, you still have the chance to do so. Uh, just go to our website, orientation.pit.edu. You will find more information regarding Welcome Week and how to RSVP or what, watch our sessions. We also hosted a, a required session yesterday uh, and we have about six more upcoming. And then there actually, there's one this morning at 10 o'clock building a pit community that is required to all students. You can also find that information. If you haven't already RSVP for the webinar, you can do so by going to orientation.pit.edu. If uh, webinar registrants over uh, is full, you can also watch the live stream on YouTube. Uh, you can follow student Pitt Student Affairs YouTube channel to find all the video and then you can just watch it on there as well. Uh, like, like we shared, uh, there's about six more required sessions uh, this coming week and then more social events as well. Uh, feel free to reach out to us at orientation at pitt.edu. That's our email account. If you have specific questions or uh, need a 
need an RSVP link or having trouble accessing to the event. Uh, but most of our information is on our website. We also want to say uh, we have continuous first year events uh, after the welcome week. So if you, for whatever reason, you didn't get a chance to connect or still wanted to meet more people or getting to know about PET or uh, first year resources, feel free to go to our website. We have a podcast series coming up for the um, year. So that's how I will be available to take questions. Um, thank you, Brian. Thanks so much, Julia. Now to give us some information on campus recreation is Jill Krantz, our executive director of campus recreation. Jill, over to you. Thanks, Brian, and hello, everybody. First thing I wanna share is that we hosted our student staff virtual welcome back training last night, and our team is ready to help you support your fitness and wellness this fall. So we're excited to kick things off here. As Brian mentioned, we highly value wellness at Pitt, and part of that effort Campus Recreation offers a variety of services. Um, we have fitness centers with cardio and strength training equipment, and those are located in the Barrow Recreation Center, Trees Hall, and then also the William Pitt Union. Also at Trees are two pools, a climbing wall and a golf practice space and three court gymnasiums. So we have a variety of spaces that students can use as well as our outdoor turf and the sports dome complex. For program offerings, we have intramural programs, group fitness classes, and then wellness consults and club sports. And I wanted to just share a little bit about each of those as we get started, because they, they will be a little bit different this year. So for intramural programs this fall, we'll offer kickball, dodgeball, volleyball, and esports. And each of these were selected, of course, to, to be thoughtful about physical distancing and to minimize personal contact. You'll also see in-person group fitness classes as well as virtual programs, some of these which are offered in collaboration with BeFit Pit. For students that are interested, wellness consultations are available and these are virtual this fall and they are also free to students if it's something that they'd like to go through as a kickoff to the, the start of this semester for themselves. We also have over 70 competitive and recreational club sports. So everything from archery to equestrian, to basketball and soccer. So there's a variety of programs out there. So probably the best place to learn information about those activities are on our website. And then each club can share more specifics. With the high use of our facilities and programs, there will be some changes this fall as we look to the helping support the health and safety guidelines. Our outdoor turf fields will open Wednesday, followed by our indoor facilities on September 5th. And so I really encourage you to check our website for the schedules and that will have all the details out there. One of the significant changes we're making this fall is to implement an online reservation system and that'll be used to access both our facilities and programs. And this will help us ensure like everyone else that we meet our physical distancing guidelines and our occupancy limits. Again, like everywhere else on campus, face coverings will be required uh, for participation indoors and outdoors. And like, again, everyone else, you'll see plexiglass in our spaces, a number of signs to help direct people. And then our student staff has really been trained very well to help people understand how to physical distance and what the, um, the spaces and how they should be used. Um, in some cases, in the particularly the cardio and strength areas, we'll really be working with uh, participants to ensure that we leave spaces between. So for instance, if somebody's on a treadmill, they might select a treadmill that's two or three um, pieces of equipment away from the next closest person. From the standpoint of our locker rooms, they will be open. Uh, we really do strongly encourage folks though to come dressed to work out uh, just because our locker rooms have limited space. And again, there are very strict occupancy limits in those spaces. From an overall health and safety standpoint, um, we'll be cleaning our high touch spaces very frequently throughout the day and there'll be deep cleaning occurring daily as well. And then just as important to this cleaning effort is everyone else's help in wiping down equipment before they use it and after they use it. It's all, uh, again, very, very important that we help with this effort. Last spring, we did a survey of students and I just wanted to share a couple of reasons that they participate with campus recreation. One of them is making friends and establishing new relationships that are very meaningful to them, being active and healthy. And then lastly, as you might guess, with uh, the classes and all the rigors that they're, they're dealing with, managing stress and providing a positive break to all the many commitments they have on campus. So we're excited to see students back and to continue to make this positive impact this year. 
And I encourage everyone to check out our website. Uh, it's very up to date with a number of FAQs and scheduling information. So with that, I'll pass it back to Brian to introduce the next panelist. Thanks so much, Jill. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna um, be wanting some information about our health services on campus and, and the doctors and things that we're able to provide to students. So I'm gonna introduce Marion Vanek, our Executive Director of the Wellness Center and Director of Student Health Services to talk about some of those services for our students. Marion. Thank you, Brian. Uh, good morning, everybody. As the Executive Director of the Wellness Center, I'm very pleased to provide you with some information about our services and some of the recent changes that we implement, implemented here at the Wellness Center, basically in light of the challenging times we're currently in. The Wellness Center is an integrated health service and it consists of an outpatient medical clinic, a counseling center, a full service pharmacy, and a very active health education service. We maintain a patient-centered philosophy with a very strong commitment to quality. We're staffed by highly trained, board certified physicians, physician assistants, psychiatrists, nurse practitioners, nurses, medical assistants, psychologists, counselors, social workers, pharmacists. We even have a full time dietitian on staff. We're accredited by the American Association of Ambulatory Healthcare on the medical side and the International Accreditation and Counseling Services on the counseling side. And just to give you some perspective, less than 35% of student health services in the country actually have been able to achieve accreditation through AAAHC. Since the pandemic and to ensure the health and safety of our students as well as our staff, we had to implement some new and safer ways to provide medical care for our students. This included the introduction of telemedicine, teletherapy, and online programming for yoga and other stress reducing programs. We have also implemented curbside mail delivery of uh, prescriptions and other pharmaceuticals for our students and staff should they wish. We do now provide on-site medical care once again, and this is when appropriate. There are just certain procedures that do require inpatient care, and it, I mean on-site care, and these include immunotherapy, various medical procedures, immunizations, comprehensive uh, physical exams, sports medicine exams, as well as specimen collection for COVID testing. However, to ensure the health and safety of all of our students, as well as our staff, all appointments must be scheduled in advance. At this time, we will no longer offer unscheduled walk-in appointments. When you call the Student Health Service, a nurse will assist you with scheduling either an inpatient visit or an in-person visit or a telemedicine appointment with one of our healthcare providers. Also for your convenience and safety, all required forms, consents, medical uh, forms and histories can all be completed online. And this is prior to your scheduled appointment. And this is done through our secure portal. I think we can all agree that we're certainly in some very challenging and concerning times. However, by supporting one another, we can reduce the risk of COVID and complete the semester successfully. We all have an obligation to protect not only ourselves, but one another. And we can do this by knowing the facts and practicing safe mitigation measures risk reducing behaviors really do matter. So first of all, know how the virus spreads. Knowledge is very powerful. Like other coronaviruses, this novel COVID-19 virus spreads mainly from person to person through respiratory droplets from one infected person to another. As a result, it's very important to wear a mask because it's because of this, this spread through respiratory droplets, a mask can reduce the spread. And there's also some evidence that it can provide some protection for the, for the wearer, wearer as well. Once you arrive on campus, you will be given two pit themed uh, masks. All students as well as staff will be receiving some. Please do wear them. Another very important issue is to avoid contact with others. Remember that some people can be asymptomatic so it's really important, as some of the other speakers mentioned, to stay at least six feet away from one another. And you will notice once you arrive on campus that there are multiple areas of signage and position designations throughout. You also wanna practice good personal hygiene. Wash your hands frequently. Once you arrive on campus, you will see that there are multiple sanitation stations positioned throughout campus. Take advantage of this. One more and probably most important piece of advice I'd like to share with you is to monitor your health and do this daily. 
take charge of your health. Know the symptoms and be alert. Watch for fever, cough, shortness of breath, body aches, headache, any change, any recent change in sense of uh, smell or taste. These are some of the symptoms of COVID. Should you experience any of these, the first thing you wanna do is stay in your room and then call the student health service. And we'll share that contact information with you at the end of this presentation. But please don't hesitate to give us a call at any time. Uh, we are here to service your medical needs and to keep you healthy and well. Don't hesitate to call the Student Health Service with any general questions you may have. And also don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to have a discussion with you. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks so much, Marion. And our final panelist this morning to talk with us about some COVID-19 information, including testing, is Dr. Elise Martin, our Associate Medical Director for Infection Prevention and Hospital Epidemiology at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Dr. Martin. Hi, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, as you mentioned, I'm a member of our COVID-19 Medical Response Office, and we've been working with the university to really find ways to decrease the risk of spreading COVID-19 on our campus and work with a number of people on this panel, um, as well as throughout campus to really make that happen. One of the big elements that we've been working on is testing. And some of you guys have may have already been told you will be getting um, surveillance testing or have actually gone through surveillance testing as we've already gone through three days of surveillance testing thus far. I really wanna thank all of you who have done this. Um, I've heard from our testers that you guys have been incredibly professional. Um, you guys all showed up and went through and, and did everything that needed to get done to help keep our campus safe. So really wanna thank you guys all for that. For those of you who are um, potentially going to be getting tested and have questions about surveillance testing, the main goal of surveillance testing is really to understand on our campus about what is the approximate um, proportion of our campus that actually came with COVID-19 on arrival. Um, it gives us an idea of what we should be doing for overall safety on our campus or all of the mitigation things that we've been working on, are those going to be sufficient? So it really gives us that gauge for safety. It also will help us to identify some students that are positive and maybe not have symptoms. Uh, there may be some of you who are wondering what's it like to actually get tested? Is it safe? You know, is it painful? Um, and I really do want to share with you that we've done everything we can to try to make it as safe as possible. We have an outdoor testing facility which decreases the risk of spread. We've done a lot of work to make sure that we're social distancing. Everyone is wearing masks, including those who are getting tested. Um, and um, we're really trying to just do all of the cleaning procedures to make sure that um, we don't have any risk to our students who are coming through to, to help make our campus safe. Additionally, um, some people may have some questions about actually getting swabbed. I know on the news and some maybe images you've seen online have made this look really scary. Um, this is from what we would think about as a nasal pharyngeal swab, which is a much deeper swab than we're doing. We're doing a nasal swab, which is very effective for identifying COVID-19. Um, but can be done safe, easy, and most importantly, painless. Um, we've talked to a number of our students who have already gone through this and they've had really good things to say. So that it was um, not painful, not scary, and we're really pleased with the experience. So I'm happy to report that. Some of you might also be wondering what are the results so far? We have um, a results, we'll be putting out some information this afternoon, specifically on um, what we found so far from surveillance testing, as well as what is ha um, what data we have so far on any symptomatic um, faculty, staff, or students. And we have regular updates that will be coming out throughout the semester and we'll be putting that out um, later today. So please stay tuned. Great, thank you so much. And I wanna thank our panelists for providing that information up front. Um, and now we do have time to take some questions and answers. And so um, I have, I'm um, gonna start off with a couple questions in the area of campus recreation for Jill. Um, so the first question is, when will gyms open for student use? So I'll let you handle that one first. Yep, thank you, Ryan. The, again, the outdoor turf fields, those will open this Wednesday and the indoor facilities will open on Saturday, September 5th. And those That's schedules are posted online. Great, thank you. And then a follow-up question to that is, um, can you provide some clarity regarding the recreational facilities? Will students need to reserve a time if they just want to walk in to exercise for an hour or can they just show up and work out? Yeah, great question. Yeah, students will need to reserve a time and a date to use the campus rec recreation facilities. And that includes everything from maybe doing a workout in the barrel recreation center to swimming at the pool or using the climbing wall. So each of those will require reservation. 
um, and they can make 45 minute reservations and um, up till three days at a time that they can have reserved in the system. We'll also register students for group fitness classes. Again, all of these things, we wanna make sure we um, manage our demand and also follow our safety guidelines as far as physical distancing and occupancy. And really the, the big thing is we want to ensure that students aren't coming up to go work out and they have to stand in a really long line to wait to get into the facility. So we really encourage people to reserve in, in advance. If in fact, maybe their space is open, they can check online immediately, it's live and they can be able to check in line and see their space is available, click it, book it, reserve it, and then come down and work out. Great, thanks so much, Jill. Um, a question for Dr. Martin, based on your role with our COVID-19 Medical Response Office. Can you talk a little bit about um, what decides the change in postures when we move from uh, one posture to another? There are actually a lot of things that are gonna go into this decision. I think people have seen um, numbers out there on percent positivity, the information on surveillance testing. Um, but we're actually going to look at a lot of components because we think there's a lot of factors that are going to play as to whether or not it's safe to be um, doing in-person portions of campus. So we're going to look specifically at what's happening in our local county for here in Pittsburgh, that will be in Allegheny County. And then for each of the regional campuses, we'll look at the data coming out on um, infections and um, rate of positivity in those locations. Uh, we're also going to be looking at what's happening in our local hospitals because we certainly want to ensure that we're not going to have increased number of cases that may drive further challenges if resources are already limited. We're gonna look at what's happening in our local student health. We're gonna look at what's happening in our employee health for our faculty and staff. Are we having increased number of cases? Um, we're also gonna be looking at a number of behavioral factors. So in addition to all the important things with the numbers that we're gonna be tracking, it really comes down to, are we actually doing all the things we have to do to keep the campus safe? Are we wearing masks? Are we social distancing? So we're gonna be tracking a number of those factors. And so for those of you who are interested in how you can really work to keep the campus open and keep the campus safe, really complying with um, good hand hygiene, wearing your mask, social distancing, all those great things can really help us to keep the campus safe and um, hopefully go to a posture, um, at least on our campus, move to guard it at some point um, and hopefully in the near future. Great, thanks so much, Dr. Martin. Um, and there was a question about where the operational um, postures are located. If you go to coronavirus.pit.edu, um, which is our main website for clearinghouse information uh, on COVID-19, at the top, there's a yellow box and it lists current operational postures um, for guarded risk, elevated risk, and high risk. And it shows each of our campuses and where they fall in the current designation. So feel free to uh, definitely check that out at any time. Um, a couple of questions are regarding dining for Joe. Um, uh, and this one comes up a lot and it's a very important question. So uh, Joe, can you talk about how students with allergies should handle the approach to dining this year and if there's anything special that they need to do? Yeah, no, Brian, you're right. That's a great question. Uh, so, you know, we are, um, we're really excited about our allergy friendly dining program here. Uh, you know, we have a designated um, brands that was created. It's our Flourish program. Um, what Flourish is, is it's free of all eight of the major allergens and gluten. Uh, and so these will be offered at the eatery um, every day. But what, you know, what we want to make sure that you're able to do is anyone with allergy concerns to reach out directly to our campus dietitian, Kristen Grover. So this is an important uh, email address. If you could go to dineoncampus dot com slash pit. It has all of the resource. That's the dining webpage. It'll talk about how the meal plans are used, the portability of them. It has a meet the team where you have all of the um, access to, to all of the different professionals. If you want to speak with um, Danielle Galloway, our campus executive chef, about some of the different offerings. If you want to speak with Kristen, um, you know, about allergy concerns. And we are one of the, the universities, one of the few universities that have a full-time dedicated safety manager, Jasmine Sonnet. Uh, you're also more than welcome to reach out to her to talk exactly about what safety protocol are in place for your students and what types of training that the staff have undergone to make sure that you feel confident in uh, how we're executing the program. Great, and one more question for the dining area, Joe. Can you talk about the um, precautions and procedures that food service personnel have gone through in order to ensure safe handling of food in the COVID era? 
Yeah, yeah. So, um, and it's ongoing, right? It's not just a, what did you do beforehand? Um, but as, as many people know, we've been, you know, planning and training on this for a long time. And, uh, you know, we always like to say in food service that we're really used to good hygiene practices. It is, uh, you know, part of our daily routine. So constantly washing our hands, changing out gloves, not touching our face is something that uh, has been, you know, uh, firsthand to us for, for a long time. But we also are having all of our staff, they're doing self-attestation forms when they uh, are coming onto campus that they're not exhibiting any symptoms. They're doing temperature checks. So there are the extra safety precautions that are being put into place. As we had mentioned earlier, um, the, the barriers uh, that have been installed throughout campus to protect not only the students, uh, but the staff as well. And so uh, we feel really confident. Um, again, if you have any specifics, Jasmine Sonnet on the dineoncampus.com slash pit would be more than happy to, uh, uh, to you know, answer any direct concerns that you might have. Great, thanks so much. Um, a couple questions pertaining to academic affairs. Um, if a question, if a student uh, tests positive and they have a class that is in person, such as a required lab, what accommodations will professors provide to the students so that they can keep pace with the class and what should students do in that scenario? Sure, thanks for that question, Brian. Um, so what we always say is to keep in communication with your professors, right? So professors are going to know exactly how to help you and you want to reach out to them and let them know what's going on and communication is vital. So they're going to know the best way to help you through that situation and the best way to provide that support for you on, on a one on one basis. So again, um, departments and instructors, your faculty are going to know um, exactly how to help you through that situation and what support they are going to be able to provide provide you. So um, just, just like I said before, with the flex at pit model, um, you know, you're, you have a choice on a daily basis on, on how you want to engage in your classes. So the, your faculty are the ones that you want to communicate that in, information with. Great. And, and another question pertaining to academic affairs, and this is regarding um, books for classes, et cetera. Is it advisable for students to wait until their first day of class to find out from their instructors as to books and other resources that will be needed and required for class? Sure, I mean, you certainly can. Um, the faculty are the ones who reached out to the bookstore to let them know what was needed. So you're welcome to, to get in touch with the bookstore and they have some really great resources where if you haven't arrived to campus yet, they'll deliver that to your, to your room, right? Um, or if you are um, doing uh, your, your coursework at home, they'll de deliver it there too, um, free of charge. Uh, but if you, feel more comfortable kind of waiting till the first day of class, checking out your syllabus, you're more than welcome to, to have an, uh, a conversation with your faculty just, just to make sure. That's perfectly fine as well. Great, thank you. Um, and, and actually one more follow-up question for um, academic affairs. Um, will professors be holding office hours in this environment? Will students be able to meet with them remotely? And how can students find out that information? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's going to look a little bit different, right? And so each instructor is going to going to give you that information. I would assume in the syllabus or through Canvas. You know, it might look a little different. But that academic support piece that I mentioned a little bit earlier um, is where you're going to find that information. So. Um, it, it'll be through Zoom or through Teams, you know, wherever that instructor feels the most comfortable meeting with you, um, you know, through an environment such as this, perhaps. Um, but they'll, they'll let you know through their syllabus or through their, their Canvas course or however they're meeting with you. Um, they'll provide that information for sure. And we're standing up some of those resources for, for faculty right now but they'll let you know and they'll make it easy. And just like before, if they have office hours at a certain time, um, they'll have office hours, but it'll just maybe look a little bit different, but we want to be sure that you'll be able to ask good questions when you need to, um, you know, go and, and work on a little bit of, of, of time with them. If it's a math problem that you have or need some writing um, support, whatever that looks like. But we also have the study lab and the math lab and the writing lab. and things like that too. So don't forget to ask those good questions as well if you need to and do it early. <laughs> so reach out early and, and, and do the things that you need to when you need to because all of those things are still here. Um, that has not gone away. So we wanna make sure you do that. Great, thank you so much. 
a question for Marion and our student health services approach. There's some questions coming in, Marion, about the sharing of information and are there specific forms that parents should be working on so that they can talk to doctors if a student gets sick or is hospitalized? Um, sure, thank you, Brian. Uh, confidentiality and privacy is always a very hot topic and a very important topic in student health, uh, as well as the wellness center in general. Um, because of HIPAA rules, uh, we do not share information with anybody other than the student who is actually receiving the care. Uh, we are not permitted to share information, nor would we. Um, if a student, however, would like to, um, for us to have a conversation with a parent or another guardian regarding their uh, medical care, we can certainly do so, but the student would be required to sign a release of authorized information, and that is episodic. It's per visit. Um, it is not a report or a document that the parent would submit. This basically is done only by the student. Thank you. Thanks, Marion. Um, a couple questions um, have come in. Uh, one about career services and um, uh, helping students with jobs and things uh, of that nature. And I, I did want to let you know that th we are doing an online career fair this year. So what we typically do in person, we're going to have those same resources where students will be able to meet uh, with um, people who are doing hiring. So all of those services will continue. And just so everybody has them, um, the dates are gonna be September 25th for liberal arts, sciences, and business. September 30th will be for engineering. And October 2nd will be for computing and information systems. Um, and for students who are looking to meet with a career counselor, work through a resume, things like that, our career services are gonna have all of the same resources and opportunities available and they can be contacted by reaching out to careers at pit.edu. So I just wanted to make sure that that was out there um, and that information was shared. A question for Jill, uh, how is the university approaching club sports and intramurals for the year? Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that question. Uh, the intramural sports is a little bit easier to address. And really what we've done is we've just changed our offerings. We've looked at the type of programs and sports we could offer from low, moderate to high contact. And we've pushed all of our sports this fall to what you think of as low contact. So like I said, we've got kickball and dodgeball, things like that, as opposed to basketball, where there would be definitely high contact. So that's the difference this year from an intramural standpoint. From a club sports standpoint, we are still waiting to learn a little bit more about what we expect from a travel standpoint as far as competitions where students would be traveling to other campuses. As most of you have seen probably in the NCAA, a lot of the um, colleges are postponing their fall sports. And so we're trying to wait and get the best guidance that we can that will help us understand uh, whether students should be traveling off campus for competition. And we'll have that information soon and post it on our website. Great, thanks so much, Jill. Um, gosh, we're like 10 questions in and it's the first time I'm reaching out to Kathleen. This is a little different than usual. So um, Kathleen, this is actually a question about PIT ID. So we have one situation where a student has received their PIT ID, um, tried to activate it and wasn't able to, but can you just talk about um, who they should contact the ID process in general, particularly um, in this remote environment? Yeah, for sure. So if you've not arrived on campus yet, when you arrive on campus and you go to approach your residence hall or your apartment, there will be a check-in station set up and um, depending on what kind of ID you have, what year you are, you might need to activate on a couple of different machines. So there will be somebody there that can assist you with that. If you have any issues um, beyond that, something that they can't troubleshoot um, out at the residence hall, then they will send you over to Panther Central uh, where folks can take a look at your ID a little more closely. Great. And one follow-up question, Kathleen, um, and it's regarding technology in the residence halls. If students have concern about Wi-Fi connection, things like that, who is it best for them to be in contact with? Sure. If you are in an on-campus um, pit building, you're going to want to go ahead and reach out to the help desk. Um, they can route you to the company that is that does all of our residence hall um, uh, internet services. It's called Apogee. You don't need to know that, but they can get you to the right uh to the right people there. And then if you are in a hotel, go ahead and reach out to the hotel desk directly. Um, they have been in the process of upgrading the Wi-Fi systems and, and a couple of those properties. They are still working on that, especially in residence in Bigelow. Um, they are there today as we speak, um, working on um, Wi-Fi as well as getting all of our swipe um, and getting our point of sale set up 
for our food service. So that one's a little bit still of a work in progress, but they do know that the 19th is the first day of class and everything needs to be ready to go by then. Great, thank you, Kathleen. Um, this is, I'm gonna pitch this question to two people. It's gonna be combined. We'll start with Dr. Martin and then maybe Marion can chime in. Um, so the question is, um, if a student should test positive, um, A, how soon will they know? B, how will they be notified? And C, what resources will the university have in place to assist the student through um, the time period afterwards? So um, it's going to depend on a couple things. Is this going to be someone who tested positive because they were symptomatic or are they testing positive because it's surveillance? So for surveillance, the turnaround time is pretty quick. You'll probably hear back in a day or two after you get tested. Um, we may have some delays, but you should hear back relatively quickly. And we are notifying people who are negative as well. Um, if you do have any questions about your test results, have not heard about them in a timely fashion, you can always email uh, the CMRO at pit.edu um, to potentially ask if there's any issues or talk to student health, they may have your results and we may just be having trouble contacting you. Um, if you do test positive, we will actually work with um, both the healthcare professionals from student health to um, identify any healthcare needs you have. Um, they will also identify whether or not you need to be moved into isolation housing um, or if you need to have additional people quarantined. So we will work on all of those pieces with you. Um, resources for kind of going forward. Um, like I said, we have resources for housing to keep everyone on campus safe if we do need to have you moved into a different location because of your housing situation. Um, we have uh, meals that will be provided in those locations. We'll provide you with medical assistance. Um, Marion and the, um, the team at the Wellness Center have a really wonderful process to help have uh, daily check-ins with their group, um, monitoring for symptoms. They'll provide you with um, a kit that'll actually have a lot of the things you might need while in that facility. And so um, the important thing is if you do test positive, you've got a lot of people that are gonna be working on this. You don't have to memorize everything I just said, but um, you, we will be reaching out to you. We will be walking you through that process to make sure that your health is really addressed. And then in addition, the great thing about Flex at Pitt is if you're able to attend your classes virtually, we really do wanna make sure that that's a possibility if you're healthy enough to do so. Because we don't wanna have big disruptions in your education if we don't have to. We want this to be um, both a healthy process and um, something where you can continue your really great education here. Did I miss anything, Marian? Um, no, just to add that um, obviously for diagnostic purposes and treatment purposes, the student health service is there uh, to assist you. So if uh, for whatever reason you're not feeling well, uh, whether you suspect COVID or not, please give us a call. We can get you tested. Um, we are working on a couple different um, outside services to assist us with the turnaround time of testing. And um, we're hoping um, certainly by the middle of this week to have an improved turnaround time. But regardless, you will be under our care and somebody will be in touch with you on a daily basis. And just to reiterate everything that Elise said, um, we would also follow up with uh, making arrangements for uh, isolation as well as quarantine housing. Great, thank you, Marion. Uh, this is a question for Julia. If a student was not able to participate in the session or view a session due to um, either moving in or another obligation, how will they be able to get that information? Sure, um, so all the required sessions will be recorded. So you can find um, the re record video or the session by going to our website. Um, I can send the website link on the on the chat function, but if you go to orientation.ped.edu uh, and then follow the welcome week tab, you will be able to find the link to watch it later or yeah, to watch it later or if you wanna catch up. Great, thank you, Julia. Um, Kathleen uh, answered one question um, privately in the chat area, but I do wanna call it out. And the question, cause this question comes in a lot, are guests allowed in the residence halls um, and are, is it being monitored? The answer to that is no. Um, guests are not permitted. The university has worked extremely hard to make sure that our facilities are COVID-19 ready. We're doing the best job that we can to manage our environment and work with our own community members to make sure that happens. We do have allied security guards in the halls that who, who will be monitoring that. And so we understand that this is maybe a little bit different than a typical year, but we really need our community to abide by this um, so that we can have the safest environment that is possible. 
Um, we have about five minutes left, and I want to give our panelists one final opportunity um, to share their contact information. I know that there's some individualized questions that are coming in about uh, either a student who lives on a specific floor or um, specific information. So I would like to go around to make sure that everyone knows um, the appropriate area to reach out to given your question. So if we can start um, with house, housing in Panther Central, Kathleen, the information for that area. Yeah, um, just go ahead and email me directly at kak58 at pit.edu. Again, kak58 at pit.edu. I do encourage you all to keep looking at our websites, the coronavirus page, the Panther Central page. They are being updated very frequently. Thank you. Great, thank you, Kathleen. Joe, if students have inquiries, uh, students and parents have inquiries about dining, what's the best way for them to be in touch? Yeah, you can always email me directly at jbeman, B as in boy, E-A-M-A-N, at pc.pit.edu. Uh, you can also go, of course, to the